Hey, what's going on everyone? Back with another knife overview today. I'm very excited to uh, introduce the new, to me, Spartan Blades Acrobus that I recently received. Um, the details on this knife, again, here's the box that it came with, very plain Jane cardboard. Um, the Spartan Acrobus is gonna be five inches closed. It features a three and a half inch blade eight and a half inches overall. Um, it has an S35 VN steel blade. Um, it's running a titanium frame with G10 inserts. However, you are able to, or when you could get this knife, um, you could also do uh, carbon fiber overlays for a $45 upcharge. Um, this knife weighs a you know pretty appropriate 5.25 ounces. And um, you know one of the things when I was doing research on this knife that was pointed out, this knife is completely USA made, so made in Aberdeen, North Carolina, and uh, using only US origin materials. Um, the blade is gonna be a tungsten DLC PVD coat on here, which is really cool. It's not just Cerakote, like they actually do some cryogenic type stuff to it. So I, I really like that. They, they did not cut any corners when they were doing the finishing on this blade, and that's, that's great to see. Um, as I said, this example has black G10 scales on it. Um, and from what I can tell, whether you get carbon fiber or G10, it does not affect the weight at all. It's a one for one trade. Um, the MSRP on this one, it was available was $445. Um, it is running on bearings, which is cool because this is a fairly old knife as we'll see. And this is of course the first production folder that Spartan Blades ever came out with. Um, also of note, uh, one of the things that, um, you know, kind of stuck out to me going to Spartan Blades website. So depending on, or it doesn't matter who the owner is, um, Spartan Blades offers free lifetime sharpening services for their blades. So that, that's kind of unique to Spartan Blades, kind of going back to my video on knife warranties. Uh, Spartan Blades, I know, across the board is great. It's also worth noting that Spartan Blades also does a lot of stuff for the veteran community. Um, I'll try to post right here from their website the uh, organizations that they support, and both of the uh, founders are actually former um, SF operators. And um, you know, I've that is that's really neat to see. Kind of like uh, we, we do see that a lot in the knife world, but Spartan Blades, you know, two you know top tier operators turned knife makers. Um, the next detail on this knife that is worth mentioning is the lock bar stabilizer design. I don't know if you can see that kind of silver piece in there, but that was actually licensed from Rick Hinder. So, um, you know, same lock bar that you'd see in an XM18, XM24. Um, you know, I do think that some fixed blade companies like Tor, Half Face Blades that get into folding blades, you know, their first stab at folders usually leaves a lot to be desired but with um with spartan blades like you, you can tell that they put their research in they didn't want to put just like trash out there and um you know to the to the extent of going to rick hinderer paying to use his patented lock bar stabilizer it, it, that's definitely an, an indicator of how much time and attention to detail went into this blade all right before i get my thoughts on this blade i wanted to do a few comparisons and Pretty excited to say that, you know, I can kind of compare Spartan's first folder to kind of the folding blade that they're most well known for, which is the Spartan Harsay folder. So, you know, this uh, Acrobus is definitely smaller than that. Um, also kind of on my <laughs> table right now. So I have a Spyderco native compares to it like that. Um, so I, I think the general theme here is you have like a larger handle, a small-ish blade. Um, I also have a Chris Reeve large Sebenza and um, one of the other observations that I had was the blade is very sebenza e if if that makes sense um, that this drop point um, that I don't I don't want to say that they took it from you know Chris Reeve and the Sebenza it's obviously a classic design but I think it's neat that they went with with that style blade and then finally have a small Sebenza right here so it's definitely a lot larger than a small Sebenza um, so getting right into my observations, um, first of all, this thing has a very, very thick handle to it. So we'll, we'll compare it to a Chris Reeve Sebenza. I mean, it, it's just, it's a massive handle. And, um, as I've said before with knives, I actually, I like to get more height in the handle. If there's going to be anything, I don't really need a lot of 
with here. And this one I think would be the perfect profile if it didn't have these G10 liners over the titanium scales, but it, it is what it is. And it's kind of a dated design. I'll post right here. Um, you know, a lot of early to mid 2000 knives, such as the, the Lone Wolf um, Laredo that I just showed you, they have these scales kind of covering up the pivot. And I, I think it was just a trend for the time. Like you really don't see many knives these days that are constructed like this. So in, in that respect, it's definitely a little bit dated. The next observation that I had, so keeping in mind that this is running on bearings and, you know, I have not yet taken this knife apart yet, um, you know, cleaned it, oiled it, etc. But it's just kind of, it's a very kind of clunky firing it. It's, it's not very smooth. Sometimes, you know, I'm able to kind of short stroke it a little bit, but I haven't really been able to like thumb flick it consistently. Like that was probably one of four times it actually did it. But, um, you know, kind of a clunky metallic sounding knife, but you know, that, that could just be indicative of the early bearings that were being used in knives. I don't, I don't necessarily know, but it was one of my observations. Um, the next observation that I had was this pocket clip on the back. Um, I thought it was kind of funny and I'll try to post a picture right here to compare the two, but on Half Face Blades um, Kavner folder, they actually have an arrow as the clip, which, you know, when I reviewed that knife, it was kind of one of those things that I was like, you know, it looks cool, but it's not very functional. With this one, it's almost like they cut out the arrow, sold the arrow to half face blades, and then kept what was left to make the pocket clip. So I thought that that was kind of funny. Like, although people, you know, certainly on social media, et cetera, were like, man, look at half face blades clip on the cabinet folder. It's so cool. It's funny that Spartan Blades from, you know, the mid 2000s was kind of using the inverse of that um, on a clip. And with that, this is one of the more spongy clips that um, that I've seen. And again, it's further dating itself. Um, you know, it certainly is, it's a fairly deep carry clip. You just have this lanyard hole, you know, poking up out of your uh, pants pocket, but it is just like very spongy and it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence that it will stay in your pants pocket. So, um, you know, I, I think it's just due to the sheer length of this pocket clip. Again, it runs more than halfway down, you know, the the knife body itself and that just creates a lot of mechanical advantage to be able to manipulate this thing but but not in a good way and kind of also on the topic of the pocket clip the pocket clip is actually worked into this lanyard hole which you know if you look here these are all torx um, screw heads here but then the actual lanyard hole is an Allen key. So I thought that that was interesting. Most knives that I come across, they either are all Torx bits or all Allen heads or all something weird, but this one has kind of a, a mix of both. And um, the next observation that I had, and I, um, you know, I think it's, it's kind of cool how subtle this knife is. It's kind of a sleeper in a way. On the blade, it just says, you know, S35VN, you flip it over, it says USA, and then, you know, you have this Spartan Blades clip logo, which the arrow certainly belongs to Spartan Blades. You know, half Face Blades was not the first one to, to use that, but upon closer inspection, and I'll post a picture right here, on both sides of the lanyard hole, it actually says Spartan Blades on it, like very subtly, I think, a lot of knives for the most part that I come across these days, you know, whether it's a Spyderco, et cetera, they, they kind of, they brand, like everything's like badged with the, you know, logo, name, blah, blah, blah. This is the most kind of understated knife as far as logos go. And, and I really do appreciate that. I don't think a lot of people that look at this knife, unless you're familiar with Spartan Blades, you wouldn't know what it is unless you held it up to your face and looked at that lanyard hole. So that concludes my overview of the Spartan Blades Acrobus. Again, this um, this knife, I, I did try to do some research on it, and from what I can tell, it is out of stock everywhere to the tune of it not even being on Spartan Blades' website anymore, but there is one website, which I'll post a screenshot right here, that you know says you can add it to your cart. They're the only website online that I could find having it in stock, so I am Oh, I mean, these are definitely discontinued. So I don't know if that, you know, website has new old stock of it or, you know, you go to put it in your 
cart and there's nothing there. So um, I really do love this knife though. I love the blade shape. Um, the ergonomics are a little bit thick, but they are thought out. Um, I don't really like this full length G10 backspacer. Again, in some of my other videos, I've covered it. I think that that just, it kind of invites a lot of grit and grime to get in here. And then, you know, to make it even more of kind of a pain in the butt to clean this thing, the fact that you have to work these Torx bits to get the scale off and then you can work the pivot, then you can take it apart, similar to that Laredo that I showed you. There's just a lot of steps to clean this knife. Like, I think that this would be I would definitely like this a lot more if it wasn't this closed construction knife, but but that's across the board. It's not just this knife. That's a style of, you know, making a knife that, that I don't really like. Um, but all that being said, this is a really impressive folder for a first stab from a company that is predominantly a fixed blade company, even to this day. I mean, certainly, you know, with the um, you know, creation of the Spartan Harse folder. They have a bunch of other ones that look really cool. I don't have any experience with them. I may try to, uh, to get into a couple of the other ones, but you know, this was kind of the OG. This is the one that started their, um, yeah, their, their run at folding blades. Um, the only drawback that I can see from this knife is the fact that it is a bit dated. Again, we covered the scale covered liners, the complete, you know, backspacer cover up. Um, and, uh, I think like, yeah, one of like my wishes, and again, this is, no one's gonna hear this or whatever. I would love to see a gen two of the Acrobus. Again, I would keep the blade. I'd probably shave some off the handle. I would do inlaid G10, maybe lighten up, um, you know, the, the frame itself. But I think if they were to do that, they could kind of, and yeah, throw some barrel spacers back here. They could kind of tap into that Sebenza crowd, I think, like pretty easily. Like, it, this is a very wieldy, comfortable knife to have in your pocket. I do really enjoy carrying it, but you know, the, there's still a few things that you see this thing and you're like, it's, it's a beautiful knife. I mean, if you had a time machine, went back to 2010, this would be a really cool, albeit expensive knife for the time. But you know, so if anyone from Spartan Blades watches this video again, Love this knife, would love to see a Gen 2 of this. So um, with that, we'll wrap things up. Again, just wanted to give a quick overview. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, throw them below. I've been trying to pump out more content here for, for you all. So um, if you have not already, um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you have, really appreciate your support and we will see you next time.